Hello everyone, this is Vikram and welcome to my channel. In this video, we will understand how to install K9S CLI on our Mac machines. So K9S, it is basically a Kubernetes CLI to manage our Kubernetes cluster. So we can do the same with kubectl as well, but uh, using kubectl, you know, we need to run a lot of commands in order to switch across the namespaces or, you know, access various resources or different contexts. But K9S provides a very beautiful, uh, you know, a UI kind of thing that to using uh, the command line. So if you want to switch across different namespaces, we will do it directly with click of a single shortcut button on the keyboard instead of running kubectl commands. So it also has other features as well. So we will uh, see all the features once we install it. But uh, here K9S acts as a very good alternative to our usual kubectl utility. So first what we'll do is we'll try to install it by clicking on this installation. So we can directly install it using brew. So one thing you need to remember is you need to have a cluster up and running and uh, kubeconfig uh, you know already available in your local machine so that you can talk to a kubernetes cluster so in my case i already have minikube cluster up and running so if you don't know how to install minikube on mac apple silicon so what you can do is you can um, uh, refer to the video that i'll provide in the description below so you can first uh, set up your minikube cluster and then you can come back to installing k9s and uh, if you see i already have minikube cluster up and running and uh, i have access to the cluster And if you see, I'm able to list the namespaces as well. And uh, I also have uh, a file called uh, K9S. Uh, so if I, so it is K9S test.yaml. So here I have created some namespaces, some resources so that I can show you all these resources in the K9S CLA. So I'll also provide a link to this file so that uh, you can run this so uh, to create some dummy resources. So let's first apply this file using kubectl apply hyphen s k9s uh, test.yaml file. So this will create some uh, three namespaces, dev, prod and qa, some deployments across these namespaces, some roles and cluster roles. So that is fine. So once uh, you have uh, these resources running and uh, minikube running, so what we can do is we can directly install uh, k9s okay so i'll simply place this uh, command brew install k9s so this has to this will install k9s So our K9S is installed. So how, the, uh, how do you invoke this binary is just uh, type K9S and uh, you will have this beautiful CLI open. Now if you see we have the current context, current cluster, the current user, the K9S version, everything mentioned. CPN mem resources are not available because we don't have uh, you know metric server installed. And you can also see uh, it is giving you two namespaces all in default and some shortcuts to attach to the pod, delete, describe, edit the pod, kill the pod, port forward, uh, logs, lot of things. So by default, it is showing the pods in the uh, default namespace. Okay, so there are a lot of shortcuts you need to know here. The first thing is if you want to switch across the namespaces okay or uh, you know switch across the different resources by default it is showing the pods so how do you do it you press a uh, colon so you once you press colon so you will have this uh, something like an address bar so where you start typing the uh, proper resource name let's say i wanted to see all the namespaces then i would type namespaces and it will automatically complete once you press tab so now namespace is written over here simply press enter now you'll be able to see all the namespaces right so i'm interested in this dev namespace then just click on enter so it will switch to the dev namespaces and then it will show you all the name uh, you know uh, the pods in the dev namespace now if i have to see let's say deployments in the uh, same namespace then you would again press colon and then start typing the deployment and then press tab so that it will automatically complete then simply press enter 
so it will show you all the deployment so you can go inside this deployment by simply click, clicking on enter then it will show you all the pods you can click on again then it will go into the container level and uh, if you press again it will show you the locks right and if you press escape it will uh, go back one step uh, let's say that this is the deployment again i'll click on enter and then this is the pod see for the pods i can attach to the pod so that i can see the locks on the same term same terminal i can use ctrl d you can see the options here to delete so describe the pod i'll simply press d on the keyboard so it will simply uh, describe it then again i'll press escape to go back then in order to edit this pod that is editing the pod yaml you can simply press e so it will automatically open the editor let me uh, close this editor i think i, I have to use control uh, sorry colon q exclamation to exit and then in order to kill it i can use control k so if i use control k so the pod will be deleted uh, first let me select it see here once the pod is killed it is again recreated because this pod is part of a deployment and then i can see all the logs by pressing l because it is the it is shown there and then in order to see the previous logs it is p port forward it is shift f so why port forwarding is required is in case if i have to debug this pod uh, uh, i wanted to see the output so i can simply do port forward since this is an nginx deployment obviously it will serve the nginx page so what i'll do i'll simply press shift f to see the port forwarding now it will ask you uh, which local port that is the host port you wanted to use so simply press enter because that is the container port a local port i wanted to use as 9000 and the address is localhost obviously press ok so now port forwarding is activated on uh, localhost 9000 so all i would do is localhost colon 9000 to simply access that particular port you can see it is serving the uh, what do you say the port forwarding now i'll go back so if i have to switch to a different context again um, so first let's start with uh, let's understand how do you search let's say uh, i have uh, i want to list all the ports in all the namespaces okay so let me uh, switch to the namespace first by pressing colon and then search for the namespace and tab then let me search the all namespaces so all the resources um, that means all the ports are shown here now if i have to search uh, what i have to do is i have to press slash so slash and then uh, i can start to uh, search for a particular port then it will automatically show in fact i can also search the port by its ip address uh, let's say 10.244.0.15 see this is a pod i can also search uh, from a, a namespace so i can do a lot of things so if i have to exit the search bar i have to press enter so that uh, that bar is invisible now now i can press colon to uh, switch to a different uh, resource let's say i wanted to switch context then i have to type context and press enter so obviously there is only one context in minikube let's say your context has access to the k uh, kubernetes in uh, azure kubernetes in aws so it will display a lot of context then i can select a proper context and then i can actually work with that particular cluster so i only have one context uh, that i can uh, actually see now if i switch to uh, other namespace so first i have to search for the namespace and then let's go to a dev namespace now let me go to a different namespace so let me search for the namespace by using colon search is slash uh, if you want to switch resource it is colon uh, i would go for this qa yeah flask again there are three uh, ports that are part of this particular deployment now if i do port forward by using shift f okay so the container port is 5000 locally also i can use 5000 or 80 by simply um, you know giving that particular port and uh, press enter so the port forward is started now it is localhost colon 80 if you see here uh, i think port forwarding is not started port 80 is not available i think uh, one more um, you know application is running so let's use 80 8000 so 80 8000 is activated localhost 8000 so you can see this is the response from my flask pod 
and um, you know once you come back to the screen so port forwarding will be stopped uh, yeah so this is about uh, uh, so let me search for the cluster roles in something like this so colon so cluster cluster role so there are these many cluster roles so if I see the storage admin cluster role so you can see all the RBAC rules that I have given for the persistent volumes I only given get list watch and create for the storage classes I have given get list watch so here uh, using this K9 SCLI you can easily visualize your cluster role cluster role bindings as well I think there are other uh, operations that you can do so if I go back to the main page of K9S and if I see the maybe the commands so here you have various commands uh, so these are the CLI commands I think yeah so in the preview so in the main uh, home page itself if you see we have something known as pulses and then you have something known as x-ray right so how do you do this is if you go back to the k8 cli k9 is cli you know press escape in order to uh, come out of any search bar then press colon then search for i think pulse so this will show you deployments replica sets state rule set demand sets all those resources utilization but uh, you can see here no metric server detected on the cluster that's the reason why you are not able to see anything so um, you know you need to install the metric server first and then all these metrics will be visible and again i'll press colon so there is also something known as x-ray i guess uh, i'm not sure it works or not x-ray yeah i don't know you need to specify resource um maybe let's uh search i uh, know uh, maybe let's select a particular deployment or anything uh i don't know what this will do this uh, x-ray will do but let's not waste time on that because it is not required for us so what x-ray will do is dig into your cluster resources and view their dependencies let's say you have a pod so pod might have dependency on a config map a pod might have dependency on a secret maybe that dependency tree it is going to show and uh, yeah so rest of the things we already covered okay so remember one thing so if you want to switch to a different resource you come back out of any sort of search bar by pressing escape then use colon to search for a resource once you are in a resource if you want to filter any resource by searching just press slash and start typing that resource and also one more thing that i forgot is so if you have a deployment um, see here we have all these deployments from all the namespaces i can scale the deployment by pressing yes i can restart uh, the rollout by pressing r okay so let's say uh, connected city is having three replicas so let's try to scale it by pressing s now i can uh, simply do six replicas and press ok so automatically my uh, replicas will be increased to six right so this is very easy uh, instead of uh, um, you know running these commands like kubectl scale deployment deployment name followed by number of replicas it is very easy to do it using k9s cli and uh, one more thing uh, if you want to come out of this k9s uh, instead of pressing this uh, close button on the terminal simply do control c so this will bring you out of this k9s cli thank you and i'll see you in the next one